Amen. Hi there, everybody. <clears throat> Pastor Barry here. It's probably around 6.30. Amen. Welcome to the Thursday Healing School. Now, Healing School already took place at 1 o'clock, but um, we're broadcasting this video around 6.30, and we're so glad you joined us. Amen. Because God wants you well. If you're just watching for information, I, I just believe it'll help you be stronger in um, your belief and, and assurance that Jesus is your healer. But if you do need healer, just, just pay attention. And um, it's a very basic message on the laying on of hands. And um, if you're not feeling well, we would love to lay hands on you. You can come to any service or, or the healing school on Thursdays at 1, and we'd love to pray for you. So let's just get started. The Bible says in Philippians 2, that Jesus came to earth as a man. Now we understand that he's God, just as much God as God the Father, just as much God as God the Son, but it's imperative that he became a man, and we'll talk about that in, in, in just a second. But in Philippians 2, verse 6, talking about Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. When the first Adam sinned, the earth was cursed. And because he represented humanity, the entire human race was cursed. And so now the human race is sinful and God is holy and sin can't come near God. So what's God going to do? We were his prized creation and now we're no, we have no way back to God. So Jesus Christ comes on the scene. Hallelujah. Always in heaven with his father. And now he decides based on what his father asked him to do. He left his deity in heaven, came down to earth as a man. And he led a sinless life. Amen. You see, the Bible says very clearly that if you don't sin, all these blessings belong to you. You know, I think it's everybody sinned. But there was one man, quote-unquote man, Jesus Christ, who came and he never sinned. And so he deserved all the blessings the Bible talked about in Deuteronomy 28. But Jesus didn't take the blessings. What did he do? He took the penalty of sin so that we wouldn't have to. Amen. And he willingly <coughs> died for our sins. The Father forgave us uh, for our sins when we put our faith and trust in Jesus. So now, Jesus comes down to the earth. So, let's just see about his life when he was here. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. He never sinned, but that does not mean he wasn't tempted to sin. Amen. We got to know that. He was tempted in every way, and yet he never did sin. If the devil could have gotten him to sin once, it would have been over. Imagine, imagine the pressure on him, but he never did. The Bible also says in John chapter 10, verse 17, <clears throat> Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Amen. Jesus willingly on the cross laid his life down for us. Amen. And his spirit went to hell for three days. But amen, after the third day, the Holy Ghost went down there and resurrected Jesus from the grave. Hallelujah. And, and we're so grateful for that. But he willingly came, suffered incredibly under the hand of the religious zealots, and uh, died on a cross. Three days later, he was alive. He, Spirit of God brought him back. He got a resurrection body, and he's in heaven right now. And what's he doing? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, praying for us. In fact, it says that right here 
In Hebrews 7, 25, the Bible says this, Therefore Jesus is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He's praying for you and praying for me right now. Amen. If you're a Christian, he's praying that uh, you'll uh, know who you are in Jesus Christ. And he's praying that if you're not a Christian, one day you will be. Amen. Praise God. Now, here's Jesus as a man. Praise God. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 30, uh, chapter 30, when Jesus was about 30, he was water baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. When that happened, Jesus Christ was elevated in the sense that the Holy Ghost came upon him. Amen. Until he was 30, he did no miracles. Amen. Because he was a, a, a regular man. But once he was water baptized, once the Spirit of God came upon him, then he was ready to preach powerfully, to teach powerfully, and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. Hallelujah. Amen. It says in uh, Matthew 3.16, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Amen. Once the Spirit of God came on him, Jesus Christ was empowered to uh, minister, uh, teaching, preaching, and he was anointed to heal. Praise God. So, the Bible says in Luke 4, 40, Jesus was teaching in the city of Capernaum, uh, part of Galilee, amen. And there in Capernaum, uh, the people had been hearing about him, and they came, and Jesus laid hands on those who were sick and healed them. This is one of the ways he healed. Luke 4.40, when the sun was setting, all those who had any uh, that were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. you got to understand that. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost came upon him, and he was just filled with that power. And now, as he laid hands on the sick, that power was released through his hands and healed people with it that were sick. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. Amen. A man anointed by the Holy Ghost doing miracles. And now, let's just go back to what we talked about before. Why did he come as a man? Well, he had to be tempted as a man, and he had to have the ability to sin and yet not sin in order for it to, you know, as our representative. Amen. But also, praise God, he came as a man, and when he healed and did miracles as a man, amen, it, it was really, if we could get our hands on the same power Jesus healed by, then we could continue his ministry. If he came down as the Son of God, then of course he could have healed them. But then we never could have followed in that because we're not God. Hallelujah. So anyway, he healed as a man, anointed. Praise God. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day when he saw a woman who was bent over. She was hunched over. She had been that way for 18 years. Amen. And let's just talk about that for a second. Jesus Christ is well aware of people are hurting. Amen. If now Jesus was literally here and he saw the lady and then she saw him. But, but maybe, you know, now Jesus is in heaven he knows if you're hurting. And just because you can't see him doesn't mean he can't see you. And it doesn't mean he had just as much or he has just as much compassion for you as he had for that lady. Amen. He called her to him and laid his hands on her and she straightened up. And that's exactly what he does now. Amen. Go to a church. Come on over to Grace Family Church. We'd be happy to lay hands on you. And we believe that the power of God, just like when Jesus laid hands on people, amen, that same power would come upon you as we lay hands on you. Amen. He healed as a man. We healed as men and women anointed by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, so that was Jesus. 
Praise God. Where am I? Amen. Hallelujah. Teaching in the synagogue this morning. Yeah, okay. John 17, 18 says that um, as a father sent him to minister, he sends us. Amen. It says in John 17, 18, let me read it. As you sent me into the world, he was praying, talking to his father. I also have sent them. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says in Acts 1 8, Jesus had risen from the grave and he appears to his disciples and he tells them, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. He said that the power that he received when he was water baptized by John the Baptist that power would come upon them. So if that's true, then we ought to see that power manifesting now, you know, now that Jesus is going back to heaven. We ought to see that power manifesting in others in the word of God, and indeed we do. Praise God. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 12, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Amen. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Amen. They received the same power that Jesus Christ did when they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost came upon him. And indeed now, these apostles who were with Jesus, they started to lay their hands on people just like Jesus did. And the same result happened. Those people were healed. Hallelujah. Then let's talk about Paul. Remember, Paul was on his way to Rome in a ship. The ship was, you know, all kinds of problems at sea, you know, storms and stuff. And they wound up ship, shipwrecked on the island of Malta. And let me just read to you out of Acts 28, uh, verses 7 to 9, what happened. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went in to him and prayed, and Paul laid his hands on him and healed him. Amen. Now, obviously, Paul didn't heal him, but the power of the Holy Ghost, because Paul was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost that came upon Paul then, that power, the same power that Jesus healed by, that power uh, on Paul when he laid his hands on Publius, his father. Amen. That power went out of Paul and healed that man. And the Bible goes on to say in verse 9, when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. Well, you can probably believe that the most likely uh, answer to that or how they got healed is Paul would have laid his hands on him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that's good. Jesus, the apostles, you would think the apostles. Paul, he was, you know, mightily, mightily used by God. But this is what I want you to see as we get ready to close. In Mark 16, we call it the Great Commission. You know, Jesus is exhorting his disciples and us. It says in verse 17, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Is it talking about Jesus? No. Is it talking about the apostles? No. Is it talking about Paul? No. Is it talking about every Christian who's born again and spirit-filled? Yes. Yes. Jesus came, hallelujah, and he was the only one that had that power. And then when he rose and went to heaven, he sent down the Holy Ghost to empower the apostles and, and uh, then Paul, hallelujah. But the Spirit of God didn't stop there. The Spirit of God, if you are a Christian, and if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you don't have it, that same power is upon you, and you are commanded the Great Commission is just that, a command. Get out there and preach. Get out there and uh, 
you know, get people baptized in the Holy Spirit and get out there. And if they're not feeling good, your hands are anointed. Lay those anointed hands on those people and they will recover. That's so wonderful. What an incredible privilege we have to continue the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me pray for you if you're not feeling well. And then there's just one more thing we want to do. Father, you know, the Bible says that the hands of people would have that power. Amen. When the Holy Spirit came upon them. Father, we have that power at this church. And so many believers all over the world have that same power. This way, Jesus' ministry could continue all over the world. As believers get spirit-filled, that power comes upon them. So I thank you, Father, that if there's someone not feeling well and they're, they're around here, they're welcome to come to the church. And we'd be happy to lay hands on us, them in the power of the Holy Ghost, not our power, the power of the Holy Ghost would come upon that person and we believe they would be healed just like they were healed under uh, Jesus, the apostles, and Paul. They'll be healed under us. So I just thank you for that, Father. Those people not feeling well do not have to remain in that position. Come on over to the church and let us lay hands on you. Amen. But you know what? Hallelujah. I'm 78 years old. I'm in, I believe I'm in good shape. But one of these days I'm going to leave this world. And, you know, before I became a Christian, I was not very happy about that. But um, there was nothing I could do about it. Now that I know Jesus, I'm not afraid. Because once I leave this world, I'll just step into the next world, and that'll be eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the greatest gift anyone could ever offer you. Amen. It's not because I'm offering it to you. It's because Jesus is offering it to you. He willingly came. You know, he became sin and sickness, and the father watched him just completely beaten and brutalized by the religious leaders. And that had to break the father's heart, but that had to happen. He was punished for the sins of humanity, hallelujah. And once he did that, hallelujah, sin was taken care of. He paid the price for the sins of all humanity, and the father forgave you and I through his sacrifice for the father said this because of what my son went through for you and I we have to make him our Lord and Savior we have to be grateful to him and thank him for what he did I did that many years ago and we want to give you an opportunity to do the same thing right now if you do believe Jesus is the Son of God and if you do believe he came led a sinless life and on the cross he paid the price for our sins and sicknesses if you'd like to ask him to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, as Jen, who's uh, videoing this, and I did many years ago, just say this little prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you came into this world, led a sinless life, and died for me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. You died on a cross for me, and I will live eternally for you. Thank you so very, very much. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, hallelujah, we invite you to come so we could lay hands on you. If you're not feeling well, or just come and enjoy a service with us. We care about you, and we'd love to lay hands on you. Amen. If you just come on over to the church, praise the Lord. Until next time, this is Pastor Barry. Bye-bye.